Welcome to the Paladin Patch 6.3 1 to 90 Leveling Skills Guide. In this guide we'll cover all of your skills as you train to become another warrior like everyone complained to happen, better than the rest of them, but also hopefully kill your enemies along the way. Watch as you go from this... ...to this. This series is framed in the mindset of players completely new to Final Fantasy XIV or the MMO genre in general, or generally still inexperienced. In that same vein, this will merely be an overview of the actions and how to use them. Optimal rotations are better left to their own in-depth videos just due to how much complexity is involved in perfect openness and overall rotations. This is not meant to be a purely optimal guide. If you wish to be optimal at level cap, there are further places you can research your job on. We will, however, be crafting rotations as we go to help new players understand what goes through creating openers and give them a foothold to push themselves into being able to do it on their own. The goal is to drop players in on the ground level so they can make strides to improve themselves. All tooltips will be shown at the level cap for each section. Level 50 for A Realm Reborn, Level 60 for Heaven's Word skills, Level 70 for Stormblood stuff, Level 80 for Shadowbringers levels, and Level 90 for Endwalker. I also recommend all players add Sprint and Limit Break to their hotbars, both found in the general tab of your actions menu. And as for how my hotbars build, it'll make sense at 90. Just put skills on your hotbars in a way you feel comfortable using as you are leveling. Everyone has their own way of doing things. If you want more info on how I set up my UI, check the description or the card in the corner for a video on it. And keep the following in mind. Patches can change jobs still. And has, with this being an updated job guide. Be sure to check the description for any patch notes for minor potency changes or skill changes, or any other special notes. With all that out of the way, let's begin. Paladin is a tank job all about big defensives and support, good at protecting itself and others. You have some of the strongest single button defensives and higher base defense thanks to a shield reducing incoming damage. You also have some flexibility in what you can do, but generally less than other tanks, due to fewer but stronger mitigations. Your offensive kit has changed from before to be a bit more simple, but also contains more flexibility. You will be the only tank with a real ranged attack, and I don't mean the early level shield lob. You otherwise don't need to deal with much rotationally, with one exception at the end of the leveling experience. We also got a bit more defensive in the update. To play a gladiator, you either start as one or pick the class up in the Old Dog Gladiators Guild after completion of your level 10 class quest as your first class. Let's get into the finer details of each skill. Level 1, Tank Mastery. Before we even get into the skills, we have to mention that tanks are sturdier than any other role. You have a built-in 20% damage reduction, higher returns to HP from vitality, and it says bonus to damage based on strength, but you're still weaker than an average DPS. Just keep in mind, being more defensive doesn't mean you can just casually stand in all the AoEs that come your way. You still need to dodge. Level 1, Fast Blade. This is a very basic attack. It deals a 150 potency hit to the target. Nothing impressive, but it gets us started. Level 2, Fight or Flight. This is a buff that has a 60 second cooldown, increasing all of our damage by 25% for 20 seconds. The goal of Fight or Flight is to use this on cooldown as much as possible, and fit in all your best skills within the timer. We'll be getting a bunch of those skills later. Just make sure you keep attacking and use Fight or Flight as much as possible. Level 4, Riot Blade. This is our first combo attack. It does 100 potency unless you use it after Fast Blade then it will do 260 potency of damage. Combos will flash their borders when available. The glow is shown here. You should always do your combos, and going forward I will only mention potencies in combos. Level 6, Total Eclipse. This is an AoE, or Area of Effect attack. It does 100 potency to all enemies within 5 yams of your character. When there are 3 or more enemies, you should swap to using Total Eclipse over your 2 hit combo. This doubles both for doing damage and ensuring you keep all enemies attacking you as the tank. The more enemies there are, the better AoE gets. So the more enemies there are, the more enemies you pull to fight, the stronger this attack gets. It's 100 potency to every enemy, not 100 potency spread across all enemies. And so the better the tank you become, the more enemies you want to be gathering together, both for you and especially for your DPS allies. And as a side note, this will break your single target combo if used between strikes. 
Level 8 is our first roll action, Rampart. Tank's roll actions are some of the most important roll actions in the game. Please learn what all of these do. The description has a video about these skills, as does the card in the corner. Please learn, but I will not be going deep into details here. Level 10, Iron Will and Release Iron Will. This ability comes with a new UI element, a gem that glows when the skill is activated. If you do not see this gem glowing, hit Iron Will to turn it on. This is known as your Tank Stance or Enmity Stance. It will become Release Iron Will when activated, signaling that pressing the button again will turn the stance off. With the exception of 8 or more player content, you always, and I mean always, want this on. You are a tank, and you are the one all enemies should be attacking. Iron Will gives you a massive enmity multiplier to all actions you do, ensuring you keep enemies eating your face. Enmity being a measure of how much enemies want to murder you. In your party list, when targeting an enemy, the enmity levels of your party is shown. You want the lead as a tank, with an A. The enemy list also has colored indicators for current enmity levels. Red square means you're in the lead. Anything else? You're not in the lead. The exception I list is 8 or more player content, which means there are multiple tanks, 2-3 to three of them usually, depending which content. You absolutely do not want to be fighting your co-tanks for aggro. One of you is in charge of the boss, the other is in charge of picking up adds, additional enemies, or the boss when the other tank dies or is otherwise not available to tank. General idea? Whoever puts the enmity stance on first when entering a duty is in charge of the boss. Every tank has an Iron Will, but the name will differ. You'll get used to the icons and animations as you go. But it's a rule to follow, or maybe go based on which tank has more gear and HP. Ultimately though, the best way to choose is to communicate with text. If you play on console, buy a cheap $5 USB keyboard. It's worth it. Beyond who is tanking the boss, you want to be ready to take the boss if the other tank dies. So after a minute or so into the fight, turn on Iron Will even if he is a designated off tank. This will ensure that you are second in enmity above the DPS and healers. So if the tank dies, the boss doesn't start hitting the rest of your allies. It will immediately start hitting you, saving someone else from die. The other thing to worry about is when entering duties with level sync. If you are say level 50 and go into a duty lower than 50 with Iron Will on, it turns off. Always, always, always make sure Iron Will is on when you need it. This must be stressed. Be ready to hit the button every time you enter a new duty. This is especially important with dungeons since you're the only tank. Otherwise, it boils down to turn it on, then hit enemies as hard as you can. Also, in higher end content, this relationship changes and tank swaps become a thing. Level 10, Shield Bash. This is a little bit of crowd control, or the idea that you can prevent enemies from doing stuff for a bit. It does a puny 100 potency to a target and stuns them for 6 seconds with diminishing returns. A second hit will cut the time in half, stunning the target for 3 seconds, with a third use cutting it in half again to 1.5 seconds. Afterwards, the enemy will become immune to stuns entirely, at least until an invisible decay makes them susceptible to stuns once more. The problem with this is, you almost never want to be using Shield Bash. In two levels, we get a better stun called Low Blow, but it has a short cooldown. Shield Bash being single target means you're massively hampering your damage with groups of enemies, and a dead enemy deals less damage than a stunned enemy. Tanks aren't the level of power of a DPS, but they're not lightweights. And when it comes to reducing damage, you have outright better options than stun. For bosses, they quickly become entirely immune to stuns. There will be the exceptions here or there, but come level 50, most all bosses become entirely immune to all normal status effects but one. The exceptions, you have a better skill that doesn't waste attacking time. Now I won't say there are zero uses of Shield Bash, but my singular go-to example no longer exists, so I don't know any off the top of my head. But I won't say they definitely don't exist, they're not very common at the best of times. And if spamming Shield Bash on a group of six enemies is better than just using Total Eclipse, then you have bigger issues to be sorting out, like proper cooldown usage, or other players not using their own toolkits. We have another roll action at level 12, Low Blow. This is the Shield Bash replacement. 
If you need more than just one stun for stopping AoEs, Shield Bash is there, but is not your main stun. There is also Provoke at level 15. Level 15? Shield Lob. You do not automatically obtain this skill. This is a class quest skill. Please, especially as a tank, do your class and job quests. I will not verbally mention every skill that is a quest skill, but in the top left is a denotion of this. Please just do your quests. As for Shield Lob itself, this is an engagement and positioning tool. From within 20 yards away, you could throw your shield at your enemies for a weak 100 potency of damage. It has a further enmity multiplier. I like to use this to initiate combat. It drags enemies towards me as I run towards them, allowing me to grab enmity on them all sooner. Or in bosses, position them in the middle of the arena. There is also the chance to lose enmity on a target, for whatever reason. Let's say the black mage in the back there has taken the enmity lead on an enemy. You can shield lob to quick grab the enemy and get the lead back. Otherwise, you really don't want to use this much. Much like shield bash, it's single target and weak. Other than initiating fights and catching a straying target, the range of the skill is not that helpful. You don't want to be out of attacking range, and anytime you are, you won't be out of range for long. Later on, we get better options for ranged attacking, and overall, it's just a bad use of time. It won't break your combos or anything, but you're not having any real effect either. Roll actions come in, giving us Interject at level 18, and Reprisal at level 22. Level 26, Rage of Halone. This is the third hit to our combo, comboing off of Riot Blade. It does 330 potency of damage to a target. There isn't much more to say on this. Make sure you are always ending your single target combos with this. To obtain the Paladin job, you must first reach level 30 and complete the level 30 Gladiator quest. Additionally, complete the main scenario quest, Self Management, which is at level 20 in the story. Return to the guild and the quest should be there for you. Level 30, Spirits Within. This is a simple bit of extra damage for us. Spirits Within has a 30 second cooldown to do 270 potency of damage to a target. Just use this anytime you can, no matter what the situation is. It's free damage. Ideally, use this under Fight or Flight 2, but because it is a 30 second cooldown, you will get two Spirits Within for every Fight or Flight. So every other use will not be buffed. Arm's Length is level 32, and let me just stress this one. This is a defensive cooldown. Yes. Actually, go watch the Roll Actions video. Level 35, Oath Mastery and Sheltron. Oath Mastery gives our little gem a big upgrade into a full-on bar. Iron Will is now a big shield embellishment when activated, a lot more obvious than a small gem. But the real part of this skill is the bar itself. Filling the bar is done by hitting anything with auto attacks. You get 5 gauge for every auto attack. But you will notice that entering any duty, your bar begins full. This is to make the associated gauge skills easier to start using. Paladin will begin every duty with a full 100 gauge. So let's talk about the first skill that uses gauge, which is Sheltron. Sheltron will reduce damage by 15% for 4 seconds at the cost of 50 gauge. This sounds terrible, but it's better than it sounds. The short length makes it hard to use in trash mobs, but not impossible. It's better than not using it at all, and auto attacks will fill it back up fast. In boss fights, at least later on, it will be perfect fodder for blocking tank busters, big hits that do a lot of damage even to tanks. It might take some memorization, but long casting attacks that look like the boss is winding up for a big punch tend to be tank busters, or will have special tank buster indicators. Due to your auto attacks occurring often, you'll get a lot of uses of Sheltron, as if this is a 30 second or shorter cooldown. Don't be afraid to use this often for reducing damage from trash mobs or big hitting tank busters and bosses. You'll almost always have this available for any situation you could ask for. Level 38, Sentinel. Sentinel is a much more typical piece of mitigation. It has a long 2 minute cooldown, lasts for 15 seconds, and reduces all damage by a massive 30%. This is a must use for the highest points of damage in a duty. Pulled 10 enemies? Pop Sentinel, and maybe even Sheltron ones. In the 15 second timer, you'll get much of that gauge back. It's directly opposed to Sheltron in that way. Sheltron is encouraged to be used extremely often. While you won't purposefully hold Sentinel for a long time or anything, you want to be smarter with your uses. Once you pull all the enemies you intend to pull, pop it off while enemies are at the most dangerous. Keep in mind, you don't want to use cooldowns before an encounter. You waste time on them that way. And with a cooldown this strong, every second of damage reduction counts. 
Level 40, Prominence. This is a combo off of our AoE, Total Eclipse into Prominence, which does a much stronger 170 potency per enemy hit. This makes AoE spam stronger than single target attacks on two enemies. But that's not super required overall, and can just do it when there are three or more enemies. Just make sure you're keeping enmity and using your AoE combo. Prominence is a huge boost in power next to Total Eclipse. Level 45, Cover. Cover costs 50 gauge, losing yourself a potential Sheltron, has a 2 minute cooldown, and has a very limited range of 10 yams. You must select an ally and hit the skill to cover them. This causes all damage that player takes to transfer to you so long as they stay within range as displayed by the very faint tether. The benefits are obvious in that you're making another player take no damage for 12 seconds or until out of range. Some players will take a lot of avoidable damage, usually AoE indicators. Sometimes this leads to them taking vulnerability stacks and take even more damage. Cover ensures the one team member with high HP and defense is the one taking the brunt of what might otherwise kill the weakened player. With some good positioning and very quick reflexes, this can save lives at the risk of your own. That's where the problems begin. Depending on just how much a player is messing up, they could mess up so bad they take enough damage to kill you. Overlapping AoEs or some other potential issue. Debuffs they receive under cover also transfer to you. If you played Dragoon before the removal of the Dragon Sight Tether, this is shorter than Dragon Sight's Tether. Any Dragoon knows that keeping a partner in range can be exhausting. Cover is even harder to achieve. In your average party, ranged mage and healer party members will stand well a ways away from you, even when that's a bad idea. Cover will not reach them if they're far away, so you'll have to run over, hit cover, and potentially move the boss into a bad position or some other issue. Larger bosses, even melee players, can be too far away. Standing deep inside the boss's hitbox, melee DPS behind the boss can still be too far away to cover. Then anytime you actually can tether them with cover, their mistakes become your own. Cover shines better in 8-player trials and raids, especially the high-end ones. When co-tanking on Paladin, you can cover the main tank, taking damage in their place for a couple seconds, all without requiring a tank swap, which often would be better anyway. Again, there are actual uses, it's just overly niche and difficult to use for an average player. High-end tank buster cheese is great, and it's okay if some skills are only useful in high-end, I'd argue. It just means I need to warn of the dangers of improper usage. Make sure you can actually save the player you intend to cover, if you can even cover. Good luck reacting fast enough. Our final role action is Shirk at level 48. Level 50, Cycle of Scorn. On a short 30 second cooldown, this does a 100 potency AoE around yourself with a 5 yam range. In addition to the base hit, all enemies affected will receive a dot, damage over time, for 15 seconds. This does 30 potency on a server tick, which are every 3 seconds. As a result, we have 5 ticks of 30 potency, or a 150 potency dot, totaling the power to 250 potency per enemy. This is an ability, so you can weave it between weapon skills with no loss. And since it's free damage, you want to use it for single target. Being an AoE, its true strength is definitely in AoE situations though. Even at level 50, most enemies will live for 15 seconds, or close to it so you're getting a stronger hit than even prominence on all enemies. It's otherwise no different to any normal other OGCD attack like Spirits Within. Throw it out under Fight or Flight when you can, and the ones where Fight or Flight isn't available, just use as soon as possible. Level 50, Hollowed Ground. With the longest cooldown in the game at 420 seconds, 7 whole minutes, Hollowed Ground grants you 10 seconds of complete invincibility. The only exceptions are typically high-end raid mechanics, so you can't cheese some sort of normally instant wipe mechanics. But even some of those, this works for. Oh, and cover. Cover goes through hollowed ground, so you will take full damage if for whatever reason you need to cover during hollowed. The initial reaction most people have is, this is an emergency button. This thought is wrong. What's the point in such a strong button you'll almost never use if all it's for is for emergencies. This buttons can prevent the emergency to begin with. Stood in a bunch of AoEs and now you're about to die and so it's now an emergency? If you used Hollow Ground before you stood in those AoEs and stood in them on purpose this time, you would have taken zero damage. If you want to go and pull 20 enemies, you can because you're immune to damage for 10 seconds. 
Then as Hollowed runs out, you can pop Sentinel, or Rampart, or anything now that damage is coming in. By the time the enemies die, you'll still have some left, or just about be running out. Tell your healer before you start pulling, Hey, I'm gonna use my Invuln, and they know they don't even need to heal you. Get partnered with White Mage, and they can stand there for 10 seconds, then as Hollowed falls off, start using Holy which effectively will give you another 5 to 6 seconds of invulnerability. And given most dungeons will go over 15 minutes or even more, you can get up to 3 uses of this. The pace of the dungeon and ability level of your group are factors, but that's far more than the zero if you feared emergencies never happen. Plus, Hollowed Ground is easy to waste in emergencies. Press it as you die and you lose the use entirely. The cooldown will still count as used, despite you dying. If you don't release your body to the start of the dungeon, you're not getting it back for 7 minutes. So say the emergency wasn't as bad as you thought or such, you'll just be raised and carry on without hollowed. Emergencies are easier to mark out in 8 player content like Trials and Raids. Specific mechanics that might kill the party, or you need just 10 seconds more alive before the boss kills you to finish it off without wiping but there's no real way to know if or when that will happen. Meanwhile, you can otherwise use Hollowed at some point to negate tank busters or otherwise heavy damage. Be more proactive with using Hollowed. You may not get to spam it, but you can use it to huge effect. At the very least, it's going to take 10 more seconds for you to die, but the effects tend to ripple across an entire encounter and be even more beneficial than that. But let's finally talk about openers, which keep in mind are a single target kind of thing. We have 50 levels of skills, but overall not much to do when it comes to an opener. A buff, a couple of global attacks, and that's really it. This makes it easier for us to weave in defensive buffs as needed for bosses. Tank buster happening during your opener? You have room to use sentinel or such. The only goal we have to worry about is making sure we use everything under fight or flight. So let's do that. Make sure Ironwell is on as the tank and Shield Lob to pull the boss to the middle of the arena. As said, the important part of this is getting our off-global attacks used in the middle of Fight or Flight. The specific timings don't need to be in these places, but we're timing them here for reasons we'll see later. Otherwise, you're just spamming 1, 2, 3 over and over. When Spirits Within and Circle of Scorn come off of cooldown, immediately use them. The only other thing I want to note is the Shield Lob. This too is a placeholder for something later, but also allows us to position the boss better. Moving the boss into the center of the arena for mechanics, or just to make your melee party members not hate you, is of utmost importance. Your allies being able to do damage is more important than how big your numbers can be, unless your team is just that bad, which isn't common. Later, this will do double duty and be both good damage and be a way to drag enemies to the middle of arenas. But for now, practice boss positioning with it. Again, middle of arena is ideal for the majority of cases it's rarer for a boss to be placed elsewhere. The rotation is going to develop a bit as we go on, but Heaven's Word has a bit more than just rotation stuff, for better and worse. Level 52, Bulwark. The return of a previously removed skill. On a 90 second cooldown, you will block all attacks for 10 seconds. If you haven't already noticed, randomly you will block attacks with your shield. You can block both physical and magical attacks, giving Paladin passive defense no other tank has. Bulwark guarantees these blocks trigger when you need them most. Blocks tend to mitigate 20% of damage, so assuming you would have gotten zero blocks for the duration, that's a 20% mitigation for 10 seconds. But because some blocks are likely to happen, often your effective reduction is lower. But that doesn't make this bad or anything. This can be used to great effect in trash pulls. For bosses and tank busters, you might block anyway, but guaranteeing the block is pretty important if you're in a bad situation, or it's super high in content and you want to guarantee you live. Put a little more simply, pretend this is a half as effective rampart, lasting half as long. Level 54, Goring Blade. Goring Blade has entirely changed its function. It is a global cooldown weapon skill that does not break combos, not that you would ever use it in the middle of your combo. It will activate the 2.5 second global cooldown, but has a separate 60 second cooldown. The cooldown is also affected by skill speed. It's a fairly unique button in those aspects. Simply though, all this does is do a big 700 potency hit to a single enemy. Since it has the same cooldown length as Fight or Flight, make sure this gets used while Fight or Flight is up. It's such a big hit even, it's stronger than AoE on up to 5 targets. 
So even small groups of enemies, it's worth hitting on whatever enemy seems stronger or has more HP so everything dies around the same time. Not much more to it, it's just a really big hit with some unique interactions. Put it under fight or flight every time and make it even stronger. Level 56, Divine Veil. On a 90 second cooldown, you and everyone within 15 yarms of yourself will be given a shield with 10% of your maximum HP. That's your HP, not each individual party member. This has been buffed, because before you did not get the shield. The shield lasts for 30 seconds. This can be used selfishly to minor effect in trash mobs. A little bit of HP on top to keep you going. If you're nowhere near a boss, you might as well make use of it. But the best use of this will be during bosses. The further we get into the game, the more bosses will actually become a threat, especially dedicated trials and raids. Most all bosses by this point have raid-wide damage, that being damage that hits all players in the fight. You will pop Divine Veil to protect the rest of your party more than yourself for these. Your DPS and healer allies will be the ones to die to these more than you ever will, especially if they took an avoidable hit beforehand. When you know the boss is soon going to raid wide, or see the cast begin, throw out Divine Veil to reduce the damage they take. You might save someone's life if you use it. There's also mechanical damage. Most fight mechanics will also do damage to the party, while not having a cast you can reduce the damage of with something like Reprisal. This makes Divine Veil more flexible. You can reduce the damage from any and all damage types without needing a cast bar. If someone is going to take damage, the shield will be spent first. Make sure to start using this often in boss fights to experiment where it will best be spent. Level 58, Chivalry. Riot Blade and Spirits Within have been given an upgrade. Both of these will now restore MP, Riot Blade restoring 1000 MP, and Spirits Within 500 MP. Note that Riot Blade requires you to use it in a combo. You can't spam Riot Blade alone to generate MP. This upgrade is because of the other skill we get at this level. Level 58, Clemency. Costing a massive 4000 MP, this is a single target heal on a 1.5 second cast time. This restores 1000 potency of healing to the target, and if you heal a party member, you will also be healed for 50% of the power of the heal given to your team member. But this won't be something you want to use. When solo, sure, clemency to stay alive. When in a party, you don't need this. A lot of paladins for some reason think that any missing HP is caused to use clemency. No, that's the healer's job. And no, you're not helping them. Cooldowns are more important, and the less damage you do, the longer a fight goes on, and the more damage you take. If nobody is dying due to lack of heals, if you are living just fine, you don't need to start spamming clemency. Your healer has a lot of tools for healing. Let them use them. You're not helping by using clemency on the guy that the healer just used their big ability on. You just made the healer regret healing at all. You also likely aren't giving them a chance to learn. That isn't to say there's no uses for clemency. Let's take the example of yes, someone did die. The healer. You can't completely replace them, but adjusting your rotation to spam Riot Blade combos, you can become a worse healer. Lightning isn't going to strike twice, but go watch the Shadowbringers video and the section on clemency. While recording, I managed to get a run where the healer died and we still finished the boss fight. We saved time over wiping, all thanks to clemency spam. Which let me just also warn here, don't use clemency as an excuse to refuse to wipe a run. Know when an act like that is warranted, or when you should just die on purpose to start the next run sooner. The point is, clemency does have uses. The issue is a lot of paladins use it when it isn't needed. If I messed up my cooldown rotation, I'll tell my healer straight up, I messed up my cooldowns, so I will use clemency as the cooldown. This way I admit fault, show I'm not distrusting them all of a sudden, and I don't need to slow down a run when my group is obviously handling wall-to-wall -wall pulling with no issue. It will never be a default reaction. If my HP is dropping low, I will assume that was intentional. If people aren't healed, I assume this is intentional. Until the moment we die, I trust the healer has a plan. Because much like you have a plan with Divine Veil, they have their own cooldowns. Trust your healer until you're a corpse. The penalty for death is so low anyway. Level 60, Rage of Helone Mastery and Royal Authority. Rage of Helone Mastery upgrades it into Royal Authority. It's up to a 360 potency attack when used in a combo. It's nice, arguably worse animation, but other than that it doesn't change how we play the job. 
but it does mean we see a different button in our level 60, technically level 54, opener. Just remember, it's just Rage of Halone. Let's add Goring Blade into the opener. Use it under Fight or Flight every chance you get, which will be every time you use Fight or Flight. We did move Fight or Flight, Circle of Scorn, and Spirits Within back at GCD each. This is because of how things are later, practicing muscle memory for higher levels. Fight or Flight would likely be better before Royal Authority for the moment, otherwise this is your opener every 60 seconds. With nothing else to go over, let's move into the Stormblood skills and see a much more pace-changing set of skills. Level 62, Intervention. Let's just change the name of Cover to Intervention Derogatory. Because while it loses out on the pure strength of Cover, all the downsides are also gone. Costing 50 gauge and having a 30 yarm range, three times of that of Cover. The target of this ability will take 10% less damage for 6 seconds. Further, if Rampart or Sentinel are active, this becomes a 20% damage reduction. This cannot be used on yourself. The niche uses of cover remain, but Intervention is just a million times more useful for general usage. There's no tiny range, it doesn't potentially put you at risk, but it's not nearly as effective at saving the target. A damage reduction can save them, but it's not a guarantee anymore. But of course, that range. Maybe it's just my experience, but you really notice how often players stand miles away, even when it's a bad idea, once you start trying to use cover and intervention. Similarly though, there are niche uses for intervention. Pop this on your co-tank for tank busters you can't afford to cover. Or maybe you can afford to cover, but you're both taking damage. Some bosses attack both tanks, or there's two bosses, or an ad. In these situations, you cover, you die. But intervention protects your friend without your safety being lost. If you have Gage Despair, and you think you need to reduce an ally's damage, throw them an Intervention. Especially if Rampart or Sentinel is already running. Don't waste them just to make Intervention stronger though. It's a bonus effect, not the main intent. And technically there is a 10 second cooldown, so you can't use it back to back. But usually it won't be used that close together. Level 64, Divine Magic Mastery. This is a bit of quality of life and real usage. All MP costs have been cut in half, and you can't have your cast interrupted by taking damage. If you did use Clemency at all, you may have noticed some casts got cancelled due to taking damage. The real usage is from the buff to Royal Authority. Completing a combo will give you Divine Might, which allows you to cast Holy Spirit, the other skill at level 64, instantly. Also Holy Circle, which is later. You have 30 seconds to use this buff, meaning you don't need to immediately use it. Just do it before you finish your next combo. So let's talk about that. Level 64, Holy Spirit. Costing 1000 mana and having a 1.5 second cast time, Holy Spirit does 300 potency of damage to a target, or 400 potency when under Divine Might. This is our replacement for ranged attacks as anything more than a trash pulling tool. In trash mobs, you'll still continue to shield lob, tag everything with an AoE, and keep running if you're pulling more. If you need to disengage from a boss and attack from a ranged position, extremely rare as that is outside of high-end content, you will Holy Spirit instead of Shield Lob. As for fitting it into a rotation, Divine Might is here. 400 potency isn't something to skip over. That's higher than any hit of your normal combo, and has no cast time either. Technically, just spamming Holy Spirit is even stronger than your main combo, but you will lose auto attacks during the cast times and makes it actually weaker. Since you're a tank, you won't be at range for more than one GCD anyway, so just use the main combo and abuse Divine Might every chance you get. And by that I mean, consider that it is a 30 second buff. In the next 5 seconds you have to dodge out of the way of an attack. Hold that Divine Might until that dodge. You can continue to keep up time and use Divine Might before the next Royal Authority. Summarized, make sure you spend every single Divine Might you get and this will replace Shield Lob as a mid-fight ranged option. But again, being out of melee range is typically the sign of you doing things wrong. Level 68, Requiescat. This is an OGCD with a 60 second cooldown, the same as Fight or Flight. It deals 300 potency to a single target and buffs your Holy Spirit cast to hit harder and have no cast time. You have 4 stacks and 30 seconds to use them, which is basically infinite time. The Holy Spirit potency under Requiescat is 600 potency, a full 200 over even the Divine Might potency. Divine Might will however be spent first. This is due to important rotation interactions later in levels, but otherwise you can do a combo, pop fight or flight and requiescat during it, 
Scoring Blade for your biggest hit, then Holy Spirit five times for some really good damage. For now in AoE, Requiesca isn't that great, making Holy Spirit do more damage than AoE on up to four enemies, which is a very small group. But do get used to using Requiesca itself. In a few more levels, this will be very important to have practiced, even if you don't use the Holy Spirits. Extra damage on one enemy at least, practicing for later. Don't be fooled by the long length of the buff. This is a big chunk of your damage, and saving the cast for when you will be out of melee range, again, you shouldn't be out of melee range. Redundant reminder at this point, but it's something to emphasize across all play you do. Level 70, Passage of Arms. On a 2 minute cooldown, Passage of Arms causes you to hunker down and block all attacks. You also channel magic wings of protection with the floor shining behind you at an 8 yom radius. Anyone standing within this shining space has all damage reduced by 15%. This can last for 18 seconds, but will cancel if you are moving upon hitting the button, or at any point after hitting the button. The issue is, we often don't want to be holding on to this for the duration. Sure, for boss ultimates and 8-man duties, you can sit there and just hold the shield. By now you've seen many times bosses can't be attacked during their ultimate attacks. Reducing that damage is a good use, but not the best use. Outside of, like, the ultimate difficulty, you're gonna survive those ultimate attacks with little or no mitigation. No, the best use is to put your back to the party, hit Passage of Arms, then immediately cancel it. Notice the buff on your allies. Despite the animation being immediately cancelled or potentially not even appearing, the buff does get applied for a few seconds. It's a very short duration, but once you've learned the timing, you can use this to reduce the danger of multiple raid wides in all duties. If nothing else, in Trash, if you were that desperate, yes you can channel it for a bit. Though you have to be pretty desperate at that point. Even Clemency will be a better choice. So let's get into the opener. Technically the level 68 opener. There isn't much to it that has changed, mostly just an extension on top of what we already had. But quickly I'll remind you that all rotation images are down below in the description. We'll begin to double weave fight with flight with Requiesca in order to get both buffs running. Requiesca does have 30 seconds, so there is no real issue with using it a little early. This leads into Goring Blade and our OGCDs as normal. Then we just go into our Holy Spirit spam to use our Requiesca buff. One of them will also be the Divine Might one. Beyond that, every time you do a full combo, make sure you're using Holy Spirit. And remember to also be using Circle of Scorn and Spirits Within every 30 seconds, not just doing it within the opener every 60 seconds. Now let's go into our first karaoke opener to introduce it. That means I'm going to speak the name of the skills as I get used in time with the opener. Because of this and the length of some of these skill names, I may cut myself off a bit when an opener gets busy. Otherwise, just know that the skills are being used in time with the words being spoken. Pre-pull Iron Will if you are main tanking, and Holy Spirit to pull or as the countdown timer ends. Fast Blade. Riot Blade. Royal Authority. Fight of Flight. Requiesca. Goring Blade. Circle of Scorn. Spirits Within. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Fast Blade. Riot Blade. Royal Authority. Holy Spirit. Let's get into Shadowbringers for some of the most loved skills in the Paladin Toolkit. Level 72, Enhanced Prominence. Prominence, when used in a combo, will now give us a few extra benefits. Firstly, it will give us 1000 MP back. That's one time, not per enemy. Additionally, it will also grant us Divine Might, which is exactly the same. It will remove the cast time of Holy Spirit and Holy Circle while also boosting the potency. But maybe now we should talk about Holy Circle, hmm? Level 72, Holy Circle. Finally, we have an AoE use for magic. Holy Circle has the same cast and cost as Holy Spirit, but is a 5 yom AoE around yourself, similar to your AoE combo. Its power is 100 potency at base, which is terrible. Under Divine Might, it does 200 potency to every enemy, or a greater 300 when under Requiesca. Every enemy you hit, full 300 potency. As a result, once you have established enmity on all enemies, 
go right into Requiescat for Holy Circle Spam, put up Fight or Flight 2 for even further damage. This is why I said to practice Requiescat in Trash Pulls earlier. You'll need to be able to hit it for Holy Circle to get its main use. Otherwise, Divine Might essentially turns your AoE into a 3-hit combo. Total Eclipse into Prominence, then use Holy Circle. Let me emphasize again quick that you really should pop Fight or Flight into Requiescat the moment you have gathered up every enemy you intend to fight. The cooldown is so short, by the time you hit the next encounter it will be back up. It's a big chunk of damage for free. Level 74, Enhanced Sheltron. Sheltron now lasts for 6 seconds. It's really simple, a really small boost, but is a 150% length boost on paper. That's a good bit of extra damage negated for your most spammed cooldown. Level 74, Intervene. This is our first and only skill with charges, meaning it can store multiple uses at a max of 2 for Intervene. Each charge has a 30 second cooldown for a total 60 seconds. The moment you use a charge, the next one begins to charge up. As for Intervene itself, it does a rushing attack of 150 potency. It's not very strong on its own, but the big breakthrough use is as a gap closer. It has a 20 yarm range, and it says you rush at the target. That means gap close, and means you don't need to stay away from the boss for any significant amount of time. Run out of range of whatever AoE is making you walk out of range, hit intervene, and immediately start melee attacking again. If you know that there's a need to disengage or some kind of knockback effect, use one of your charges and hold onto the other for when it happens. This way you don't waste charges by not using them, but still keep one on hand for gap closing. Also, do not use this to pull! Please just stop. Bring the boss into the middle of the arena. We aren't using Holy Spirit just because it's a strong start or anything. Placements of bosses matter, and getting it in range for your party matters. Please stop using this as a pulling move. Level 76, Sword Oath and Atonement. Sword Oath gives a buff to Royal Authority, essentially extending the combo again. For 30 seconds you are granted 3 stacks of Sword Oath. These stacks are only used for Atonement a 360 potency hit that restores 400 MP each. After hitting Royal Authority, you will want to spend your stacks before the next Royal Authority. If you start a combo before doing so, you don't lose Sword Oath, but using Atonement will break a combo you start. The change this has on our open it and fill it phases is significant, so we'll want to talk about that. I'll save it for during the open it talk at only 90 though. Use your Sword Oath stacks before starting your next combo, and that's it for now. Level 80, Enhanced Requiescat, and Confidier. Enhanced Requiescat adds an extra buff of Confidier ready for 30 seconds, but you'll be immediately using it. Confidier is a massive hit you want to be using under Requiescat. It deals 400 potency only and a 5 yom AoE on a target, 200 potency to every additional enemy. Under Requiescat, that power is boosted to 900 and 450 on every additional enemy. One of your five Holy Spirits, or Holy Circles in the case of doing AoE, will be replaced with Confidier instead. That's pretty much all there is to it. Every time you Requiescat, you will Confidier. And that's going to be under Fight or Flight 2. So let's quick talk about the effects these skills had on our opener. As mentioned, in Avene, you can keep one of these around if you're gonna need it for gap closing. If you don't though, just pop it off. Atonement merely replaces our second Royal Authority combo, and Confidier starts off the magic phase with one use. It really hasn't done anything otherwise. The big changes are what Atonement does to a filler phase, which again, I'll go over at 90. Let's quick talk AoE and quote unquote openers with those. Openers in AoE tend to be way more freeform and subject to far more considerations with how you use it. For example, enemy count, size, etc. For Paladin, this is the small blurb for AoE I will give you. Like in single target, we could use our Divine Might first before the Confidier to delay for any party buffs. Again, it's just one possible way of doing things. If it's a very small group of enemies, you may even use Goring Blade just due to it being a high potency hit. Otherwise, the important part of your AoE is making sure enemies are tightly packed together, not be surrounded by them. You can dive in after they're packed together, but ensure they are grouped up for your party's benefit first. That's really all there is to it. Time to see what Endwalker does for our skill set. Not much.
Level 82, Sheltron Mastery and Holy Sheltron. Sheltron is being massively buffed. First, the duration is increased to 8 seconds for the 15% mitigation. Secondly, for 4 seconds, the original base length of Sheltron damage is reduced by a further 15% thanks to Knight's Resolve. That's roughly 28% damage reduction for 4 seconds, since mitigation is multiplicative, not additive. On top of that, we have Knight's Benediction, a 12 second heal over time effect for 250 potency, totaling to 1000 potency of healing. That's an entire clemency every use of Holy Sheltron. Supplement other cooldowns with your constant Holy Sheltron usage, and you're getting a Sentinel level reduction for a few seconds, slightly weaker Rampart for a few more, and a heal on top of it. Just make sure you're using Holy Sheltrons 12 seconds apart if you can. Make use of that heal, but it is understandable if you need to use back-to-back -back once the main Sheltron effect runs out. Things get rough in the first few Endwalker dungeons. Level 82, Enhanced Intervention. Intervention has also been buffed up a ton, added 2 seconds as well for an 8 second duration. Knight's Resolve from Holy Sheltron is also here, giving the target 10% reduction for 4 seconds. It's a little weaker than the Sheltron version, but expected. But Knight's Benediction is also here, but it's the same power, 250 potency hot for 12 seconds. Now any using of Intervention is far stronger, closing the gap between it and cover a bit more. Though again, some different use cases between the two. There's still people standing far away, and cover is still usually a liability. Level 84, Divine Magic Mastery 2. This adds a 400 potency heal to Holy Spirit, Holy Circle, and Confidier. Two and a half of these is the same power as a Clemency, which means you should be avoiding Clemency even more now. Again, did you die? No? Then why are you using Clemency? The healer literally is doing their job, and they can do it easier with you now able to heal and attack at the exact same time. Level 84, Melee Mastery. This is a basic power boost to a bunch of our attacks, but poorly worded. It says the base potencies of Riot Blade, Royal Authority, and Holy Spirit, but increases the combo, Divine Might, and Requiescat potencies too. Overall, just basically upping our power levels a little. Level 86, Spirits Within Mastery and Expiation. Spirits Within is now Expiation, which is more than just a power boost. Spirits Within was a basic single target attack with MP regen. Expiation is an AoE for 450 potency of damage on the first target and 180 potency to all additional targets. Try and aim to target the enemy in the middle of the pack to hit as many as possible, assuming it's not a big enemy at least. The AoE is only 5 yams in radius like your AoE combo. Definitely something to throw out in trash packs now. Level 88, Enhanced Divine Veil. Divine Veil now takes care of a bit of healing when being applied to allies. Any ally affected by the Shield of Divine Veil will receive 400 potency of healing. Before the raid-wide hit that you're putting this up for, you'll heal your team a little. If anyone was missing HP, be it from taking an avoidable hit or otherwise, you'll top them up and protect them even further. Level 90, Blade of Faith, Truth, and Valor. This is an extension to your Confidia button. Confidia, as we know, is a massive AoE strike for 900 potency under Requiescat. These are also impressively strong. After hitting Confidier, the button will change into Blade of Faith. Hitting Faith changes it to Truth, and hitting Truth changes it to Valor. So all wrapped up into one button. All three of these will restore HP at 400 potency. What I must emphasize is that all of these have a very weak base potency like Confidier, but a very strong Requiescat potency. All three will spend a stack of Requiescat, along with Confidier, all four of our Requiescat stacks are spoken for. Confidier and all three Blade Strikes. They are all also AoE Strikes with a 5 yam radius. Blade of Faith is a 700 potency hit with 50% fall off, doing 350 potency of damage to all enemies after the first. Blade of Truth is 800 potency with fall off, doing 400 potency to all extra enemies. And finally, Blade of Valet is 900 potency to the target, 450 on all enemies beyond. Be careful you don't hit other attacks after Confidier. If you start your main combo before using your blade attacks, the combo will be lost, and the powerful hits with it. If it wasn't obvious, just like Confidier, these should never be skipped, even Rush 2 for AoE. They are so much stronger than your prominence combo, and especially strong since you will put up fight or flight. 
blade attacks, despite being giant swords, are still spells and can be used at range, like Holy Spirit. And because of how this final skill set works, Endwalker basically hasn't changed our opener. I'll do a karaoke opener for you, just so that you have the new names being said if you need to look back on this video. But otherwise, we're just replacing that post got Holy Spirit spam with our blade combo. And of course, Spirits Within is now Expiation. Iron Will if tanking. Holy Spirit to pull. Fast Blade. Riot Blade. Royal Authority. Fight of Flight. Requiescat. Goring Blade. Cycle of Scorn. Expiation. Confidier. Intervene. Blade of Faith. Intervene. Blade of Truth. Blade of Valor. Holy Spirit. Atonement. 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 The note I mentioned at the very beginning is going to come into play here. In the current iteration of Paladin, you have a 63 second rotation. Because of how this works out, there are two suggested ways of dealing with this to move into a perfect 60 second loop you can repeat when there is no forced downtime. The one I suggest is the Drop Atonement strategy. When you have a 2.5 second GCD, all your weapon skills are a 2.5 second recast, you will need to intentionally drop two atonements every 60 seconds. And by that I mean not use them. To be able to redo your opener exactly as you did it the first time without things being misaligned, you will do a Royal Authority combo, Holy Spirit, and two atonements with XP Oshion and a Circle of Scorn mixed in due to 30 second cooldowns. Then do it again. Royal Authority combo, Holy Spirit, and two atonements. You will then be set up to do your opener again exactly as you did it the first time. At faster skill speed tiers, you will only need to drop one atonement. You'll do a full three atonements and then only a set of two. The difference of a four or five in your filler phase. Beyond that though, the rotation of Paladin is pretty simple with very little thought you need to put in. Just stop touching clemency. Thank you for watching this updated Paladin 1-90 leveling skills guide. Feel free to give feedback or ask questions on what might still be confusing to you. I am always seeking to improve, as should you. Don't stop with this guide, even if I succeeded in helping you improve. Please leave a rating, comment, sub, those really do help creators, or even go follow my Patreon. Have fun in your adventures across Eorzea, and may the power of Anne Anidhogs lay waste to your enemies.